Hi everyone, this is Dan and the future holds crypto. So this is the second time I'm trying to make this video because the first one um, I realized that the microphone was off and I talked about 30 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> so um, I'll try to, to make it brief. Uh, hopefully I don't uh, forget anything from the first video. Um, first of all, uh, thank you for watching this video. By the way, if you like uh, if you like this video, please hit the, the subscribe button and the like button. And if you hit the like button and subscribe button and I see a lot of engagement in the YouTube channel, it will uh, motivate me to make more videos from uh, now on. If not, I'll probably be have making less videos. So thank you. Uh, hopefully you'll uh, hit the like button. So let's uh, let's today we're going to talk about the market, what Bitcoin is doing and what the market is doing um, this is a very exciting week as again i mean it's uh, it's been some uh, a few exciting weeks uh, in the last couple of uh, months actually <laughs> so um uh, definitely uh good stuff uh, going on in the market and also i want to talk about, about uh, some um uh, some news related to uh ripple and not only ripple cryptocurrencies in general related to the uh, the legal uh, framework and uh, what's going on uh, so let's start with the market i mean look at the market look at look look like look what's going on here we we are at a historical price at uh, eighteen thousand and two hundred and seventy dollars with Bitcoin. We have a twenty a twelve point uh, almost five percent uh, rise in Bitcoin in the seven days. In Ethereum, we have a rise of uh, almost eight uh, percent only today. <laughs> in the XRP, um, we have a six point two percent and a seventeen percent on a week. Um, Chainlink is up with 10% uh, almost uh, to $14. Litecoin is up with a whopping 28% uh, uh, at uh, $81.6 and so forth. So, um, uh, yeah, that was a um, very good week. And uh, Bitcoin actually did something very important. Uh, if we look, uh, I mean, we didn't reach the, the all time high uh, yet, right? But we did do something else we breached the all time high in terms of market cap. So how is that possible? Well, the first in, in 2017, there were less Bitcoin than today because they were mined in the meanwhile. And so basically we have a new, all, we are basically now, we are already above today, even a while we'll speak, we are in, in not necessarily price discovery, but uh, it is a discovery in, the, in terms of market cap, right? It's in discovery mode already. So this is uh, this is huge. <laughs> uh, I hope that um, uh, we'll see more of this, and I do believe we will. Um, so look, let's look a little bit on the price level again. So it, we are very close to the previous all-time high, and uh, we we on the weekly basis we only had two weeks in the history of the, the entire history of Bitcoin, where Bitcoin was actually uh, uh, less, uh, uh, was uh, with, with higher prices, right? Um, in months, there was uh, actually, this is the first month, uh, this is the month hasn't closed yet. But if you look at it, the, pr if it, uh, the, the body of the candle is bigger than this one. Uh, so if it closes, this will be the first month. If it doesn't go beyond it, beyond uh, the first price when the the price will be actually closing above any time in his, the, the entire history of Bitcoin. So yeah, I mean, uh, good time to be here and um, congratulations to everybody who hold through all of this. <laughs> and uh, also wanted to, uh, this, by the way, disregard this uh, this uh, uh, blue line here. I'm, I tried to find a similar point in time um, and uh, to see if uh, there's a, uh, to see if what the pattern did after that similar point in time and how it uh, would translate from today. So uh, from actually this week. So uh, disregard it for the moment. It would be interesting to see <laughs> for, until now. I didn't manage to, to find something uh, that uh, worked. Um, but um, uh, uh, also wanted to to, to uh, remind you guys that uh, when we are closing to the all-time high, there's a very this is an emotional price because a lot of people uh, were were buying here, right? The 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 people that made profits were the ones that bought uh, much lower. So people bought here, the, uh, the smart money bought here and sold here. And there are a lot of 
people buying here because of FOMO, the fear of missing out. And this is where we saw a lot of media coverage and people going nuts. It was like, Bit have you seen Bitcoin? What is Bitcoin? I don't care. It's $10,000. It went over. It's $15,000. This is closing to $20,000. And people were saying, no, it will reach $500. It will go to $1 million. So basically, people were thinking that it will go on forever up. And they were thinking this is the best opportunity of their life. Um, and probably they were right. However, they were wrong about the timeline. <laughs> so um, a lot of people bought here and basically they're not everybody in the market wins. Basically, these people win who bought here and these people who bought here, if they sold, lost, right? If they didn't sell, um, congratulations, congratulations for having um, so much patience and going through all of this. I mean, I know how it feels. <laughs> so congratulations for going through all of that. Um, and um, uh, by the way, th this is what I'm saying. So there are two categories of people. One, uh, if they bought, uh, I'm talking about the people that bought here, right? So there are people that learned about what Bitcoin does and the potential. And basically they're not, they, they kept, so they increase their bags and they don't care now to sell. There are the other people that were uh, bought here and uh, didn't sell. Congratulations to those people as well. Uh, they're thinking, oh God, we're, I'm breaking through. I'm, uh, I'm not on, uh, we're, clo we're closing in, not losing money anymore. Um, so they might sell, right? Uh, and, um, there will be a lot of um, a, a lot of emotions here Bec from uh, this is this is wha what i believe this is not the um, uh, financial advice this is what i believe this is uh, um uh what i would do for example if a price would drop um i would if you guys were, didn't catch all of this my, maybe you can buy the dip but uh, definitely it might be a 35 percent drop or something like that something major but uh, it will be um nothing goes up in a straight line but then it, it's it will go up again from uh, because i do believe that this is the beginning of the bull run so uh, I believe that here there will be before, below the old previous all-time high and above the previous all-time high. There will be a price level or an interval where it will hold a lot of emotions, a lot of buying and selling, right? Uh, because uh, um, this is how um, the mind works. Well, uh, until the the people will see bitcoin break beyond and good beyond the all-time high that's when basically it will get attention again because people are getting used to it to to stuff they're getting bored or get uh, the fact that we all they already saw bitcoin at this price they already saw bitcoin at twenty thousand um, dollars they're not necessarily very impressed anymore because uh, to some perspective you think about it if, if for example you bought here the only thing bitcoin did is to recover the price right so uh, it's not something spectacular. Um, uh, that's why I believe that um, uh, this is just the beginning because when, uh, and if you actually look at the Google trends and the search trends about Bitcoin, it's not nothing compared to this part here when Bitcoin was, everybody was talking about Bitcoin. So it hasn't started, the, the FOMO, the, the fear of missing out hasn't, hasn't started yet from my perspective. I think that we are still in the, uh, the disbelief phase. Uh, from uh, if you let me show you so it's this I believe we're still here um, and then we'll have to go to hope and optimism and everything so that's probably will after hope and optimism this is where we'll see a lot of news coverage about Bitcoin what's going on with Bitcoin and stuff like that so uh, for now I don't think this is going on um, uh, so we need to, to break this first um, so uh, if you also look here now on the short term I'm this is very interesting because if you look on the short term where well, uh, in the I'm co I consider this to be a similar time with uh, December or November uh, 2016 I don't think this is similar to December 2017 because that was the end of the bull market that's when the FOMO was going, going on uh, this is the beginning of the bull market and I, that's why I believe that it, uh, it should be compared to the last part of 2016 so um, if you look here uh, this is the last time when uh, Bitcoin came very close to the previous all-time high from December 2013 
Um, so, what what did it do afterwards? It uh, corrected uh, with 35, 34%. percent. Um, yeah. Sorry about that. It was I had a delivery. <laughs> Um, yeah, so basically I was saying that uh, the last time it, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, it, in 2016, when it reached, uh, or it went very close to the previous all-time high from 2013, basically it corrected down to uh, with 34%. I'm not saying that this will happen now because it's, you know, uh, even if history rhymes, it doesn't repeat itself. Um, however, uh, but what I'm saying usually here is trying to um, uh, to prepare yourself emotionally, not to, to make any rash decisions. Um, and uh, also, um, I mean, 35% percent drop uh, might be emotional for some people i do think that it doesn't matter on the long term as we look here it it corrected and um, it went up up and up every time so basically um also it, you, you can look at the chart and you can see that it corrected fairly fast and i'm saying fast from a from a market uh, perspective uh, because um um it's um it's easy to look in the chart and see here that oh it was faster look at here it, it was very fast however this is on a week this is on a weekly so basically it took one two three four five six seven weeks to get back to pre uh, to to destroy the not destroy but to go past the previous all-time high so it's seven weeks of uh, patience that you need to 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 have and uh, you know that when <laughs> the bull run starts if you haven't experienced this or um, if you're experiencing it now basically there's a lot of adrenaline in the market there maybe a lot of people are watching um, uh, a lot of times per day the price of bitcoins and the activity that's going on there so that's uh, that the, those six weeks will not be <laughs> will not pass very fast if you're doing that so keep that in mind patience is required um, but I do believe that in the long term it's it's nothing to worry about um, also, if you um, if if you're looking on the short term, I, uh, if we're looking here in the market cap on the previous uh, all-time high, so basically I do believe that now we're uh, a point similar to this one because we just broke um, we just broke the the previous all-time high in terms of market cap, right? So I believe that we are some if you're if we are comparing to the past, this is somewhere that you can uh, look at. So it's this point in time. It's um, uh, we we broke the previous all-time high from December 2013. So um, it went it it went fairly upwards from let's say here to here. It's for 35 percent um 34 um, percent what when was this so this was um on the it was the first or second week of uh, uh january 2017 so basically if we're looking here you see that we just are we're just breaking the the all-time high in uh, in market capitalization uh, market cap so we're here so i'm curious if we're uh 34% but we'll still have some uh, we might have um some some uh, upward activity left before uh, the market will correct so if, if we're looking here basically the market corrected uh, this in uh, the same time where we saw the market cap of course the price correct in the same time um, but uh, here in terms of percentage the free on the market cap is was visible in the past as well so I do believe that we still have some power left on the upside before we see a correction but that's uh, yeah of course it it can happen before that um so let's see what happens but um exciting times ahead of us and uh, what i also wanted to discuss is the fact that 2017 was the first year in history where um, altcoins did a uh, did two alt seasons right it was one in Mar march and it was one in december and um i believe that um basically um it took a while uh, uh from Bit bitcoin uh, after bitcoin reached the previous all time high uh it took about um it was around march may 
2017, right? And I think this is very late and this is very important to, to think about uh, because um, there are people saying that, okay, this is 2017 was the first year with two altcoin seasons. So um, we'll see if this happens again because it was only one point in time when this, uh, this, this happened. So we don't have a lot of reference data. However, this is a possibility and this is uh, in interesting to watch because uh, if you're holding altcoins uh, if we have two alt seasons of course it's uh, it's uh, it will be uh, better than only one and by the way the first one in 2017 was bigger than the second one in by the end of 2017 at least for xrp but uh, uh, it was a delay it was a delay be between bitcoin reached the previous all-time high and the alts uh, exploded in um, it, for example for example it was a two months delay but i i think that um, we can look at this uh, from two angles i mean it was either uh, closing by the new all time high or previous all time high right the closing in the closing in the previous all time high and destroying the all time high so um if we look here um, this is something that I talked uh, uh, we talked about in the part, first part of the video. So this is an emotional part uh, when we're reaching the previous all-time high because people um, will um, be, uh, sell for because of fear missing out. Uh, also sell here because they're a little bit in profit. Basically, this is a very emotional um, <laughs> the price range, and uh, uh, um, because the, the, there are many many more people than uh, the, the last time in Bitcoin, I, I believe that uh, we will see things like this, depending on, of course, on the institutional level in, uh, investments, of course, as well. But I do believe this will be very important to break. And be, by, by the way, I told, uh, this is. Um, uh, breaking up the breaking out the previous all time is important because um, uh, psychologically speaking, until then Bitcoin only recovered what it lost, right? And people get used to the price. And yeah, Bitcoin was already in twenty thousand dollars. What what else is uh, big right now, right? So it only recovered what it lost, and it took how many years? Took uh, took three years, so they're not going to be very impressed by this. Uh, only the people that bought here and made a lot of profit <laughs> or here, right? The, those people will be impressed. But um, other than that, um, um, uh, people get used to stuff. So, uh, as a small parallel, and this is something important related to psychology of people. It's uh, in March when we in Romania we had the lockdown. We had a very few number of cases per day, 300, something, something like that on the country level. It was small, right? Uh, and people were freaked out, staying at home. Um, uh, and um, after the lockdown finished in May, basically, I've seen people in July and August. They didn't care anymore. They were at the beach, uh, the mountains, and basically I've seen the, the, some videos from the beach and actually, uh, uh, pictures of people being like sardines one near the other they didn't care about covid and they were getting used to the idea whatever uh their covid was not as impressive anymore so uh, and even now uh we're tens we have more than ten thousand per day compared to 300 and people uh, are are less impressed by it when it was three only 300 per day so um um, and that's a different example, but I'm just saying that the people are getting used to stuff. So but basically, uh, this is how the mind works. And I believe that we we have to break this. We have to break this uh, with a, a significant per, per percentage. And, I, uh, and after that, Bitcoin will uh, will become again important and will uh, be all over the news. It was all over the news, um, um, not not at the beginning uh of 2006 not um, uh not here right it was here so um it will take a while until it gets the full attention uh, that it uh, that will have soon but um definitely i think this is important and by the way i do think that it's the the altcoins also related to that because when bitcoin broke the psychological barrier of the price from the previous all-time high that's when the alts already uh, also broke in price a lot and had the first alt season and i also uh, and uh, the having be, regarding having two alt seasons i mean uh it's it, to to watch if we have two i think i believe that uh, uh it depends very much on the price of bitcoin when we have a very big price increase in the alts so if we have a price increase a huge one um when bitcoin is uh, below let's say 30,000 or 35, whatever, um, then we have a good chance of having two altcoins because I believe that Bitcoin has more upward potential, maybe eight, more than 80,000 or something like that. Um, um, so 
it, we might have a chance of having a new uh, another altcoin season when Bitcoin reaches the new all time high, whatever it will be. Um, so yeah, that's something important to to watch as well. Um, so um, I believe this is for for Bitcoin. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's an exciting time. Uh, congratulations for people holding on the bear market. Uh, <laughs> hopefully this is uh, the beginning of the bull market. I do believe it is. Um, but um, let's see what's going on. Um, um, definitely, these couple of weeks have been. Think so. Let's. Um, Let's uh, go to the news about uh, cryptocurrency and Ripple. I wanted to um, let's go with the uh, Brian Brooks. So first one, crypto friendly Bra Brooks gets nod to serve five year term leading bank regulator. So Brooks, a former executive who joined the office of controller of the currency in March after a stint as general counsel at Coinbase had hedged the federal agency on acting basis since May. One of his first actions at the agency was to propose a federal licensing regime to fintech startups, which would uh, spare them from obtaining state by state money transmitter licenses that all crypto exchanges currently need to uh, do business. Um, so Brian Brooks was, a, uh, was a, only a few months in and did a lot of good in this for this sector and i hope that he will actually this, this he was only nominated and he how uh, they're also saying here outgoing u.s president donald Trump has nominated active controller of the currency brian brooks an advocate of the crypto financial reforms to lead the national bank regulator on a more official basis so uh, the, uh, this is uh, what i wanted to highlight here uh this uh he has been nominated that doesn't mean exactly that he's, he's gonna um, uh uh, take the term hopefully he will because I, I like what he did the first part and he was actually in a couple of months he did what no one else was uh, um, managed to do in years so he understands crypto he understands the need of it he understands the future he understands the internet of value and the fact that that cannot be avoided and if they are not on board other countries will be and the us will be falling behind and he totally understands that compared to some fossils from the uh, government that uh, have no idea what technology means have no idea what it means to not be on board with that and how it will affect us but yeah um what I wanted to say here that uh, it might be a possibility that he won't take the term because um, um, the U.S. Senate Banking Committee oversees the OCC and will likely hold a confirmation hearing before the entire Senate votes to confirm or reject Brooks' nomination. This uh, means that timing could be a deciding factor. Trump lost November's elections to Democratic challenger Joe Biden, uh, meaning that Biden can nominate someone else to position of Brooks' season confirmed by January 20th, 2021. Uh, by the way, I've heard a lot of things here with... Um, I mean, from all the news I've seen, uh, it seems that Biden is the winner, but I've seen a lot of things, people saying that it wasn't confirmed, uh, confirmed yet. I, I, have, I hope that it will be confirmed soon. It's unclear whether the Democratic, um, uh, I mean, the, the fact I, I want to, conf to confirm that the, um, I don't necessarily care who wins. Uh, this is not a political channel. But um, uh, clarity would be, be better to have sooner than later in with, with whichever is the winner. So it's unclear whether the Democratic senators on the committee would vote for Brooks. He has been criticized by some congressional Democrats for his focus on crypto, with several members of House Financial Service Committees asking him a series of questions about his work on crypto and arguing he should spend more time addressing financial inclusion and minority banking issues, especially given the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. So yeah, that's that's why I'm saying the fossils from government who have no idea what this means and how it will influence the, the new financial system. But um, yeah, definitely, I think that uh, Brooke, uh, Brian Brooks is a Good thing for for crypto and uh, good thing for US because uh, they, they need this to, to move forward if they don't want to lose the um, uh, the advantage they have <coughs> and um, <coughs> um, wanted to also um, show you here this is very important if you I, I I already showed you in a previous video but I'm gonna do a shorter one just on uh, this part only because he will um, uh, make very good points here and um, uh, it's uh, it's important to 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 have it in your mind and we all intuitively understand that networks now are a better way of transmitting information what crypto is about and i'll talk about central bank digital currency as a species of this in a moment but what crypto is about is the idea that transmitting value is not fundamentally different from transmitting information we now have a technology that can simultaneously maintain ledgers algorithmically so you no longer need a bank clerk wearing eye shades to maintain ledgers in a book but it can also do things peer to peer so it can maintain a ledger but also transact value directly without the need for any intermediation this is just something that wasn't possible 20 years ago but now it is and blockchain is essentially the internet 
for the communication of value, much the same way that the first internet was an internet for the transmission of information. So we're here today talking a little bit about central bank digital currency. And I want to slightly reframe the discussion to sort of say there are two ways forward for an internet-based transmission of value. One way is the government can build it. Now, this has happened in various places, um, particularly among our geopolitical competitors. China has actually done two major things to build an internet of value at the government level. One is just a few weeks ago, China announced the issuance of something called the E-Remnant-B, which is an internet version of the Chinese yuan. <clears throat> Their theory is that although the dollar may be the global reserve currency, an aggressive muscle flexing China can start shipping away at the dollar by building an easier to use currency. It may not be a stable in value. It may or may not be a true reflection of the strength of the Chinese economy for various reasons, but it's super easy to use because it can transact directly across an internet transmission portal, or as dollars have to go through bank clearing organizations. That's one of the things that they're thinking. The other thing that China has done is they have captured more than 51% of the mining capacity on the Bitcoin blockchain, which means that the very first internet of money, which was the Bitcoin blockchain about 10 years ago, is now essentially owned by China. <clears throat> so as a country, we now face a geostrategic competitiveness issue, which is, do we in the United States want to own internet 2.0 in the same way that we own internet 1.0? One of the reasons that information and commerce flows as freely as it does over the internet is that we didn't give it away to China at a time when we well might have. We made policy choices to incubate a network-based economy in the US, and the result has been good and bad, I will admit, but it has been massive economic growth for the United States by allowing people to build on top of these networks, to self-publish, to sell things quickly, to eliminate startup costs, and do all the good things that the original internet brought us. Our leadership in finance is nothing like assured at this point because we have yet to embrace networks. And so now we're having a discussion in this country about two alternative choices. One is, we can be a relatively slow follower to China and build our own central bank digital currency. So, so again, China issued its central bank digital currency about six weeks ago. We are talking about the possibility that our Federal Reserve could issue our own digital dollar four years from now. So consider that we're going to have a four and a half year time lag in slow following our most important global competitor into the world of electronic money. Normally, we don't want to be the slow follower. We want to be the leader or at least a fast follower. So what's the alternative to the government building a set of sort of government-run payment rails uh, built, built on, a, on a central bank token. The alternative is to do what we've always done best in this country, which is to unleash the innovative, risk-taking private economy to build networks. And the good news is they've already done that. So we have a number of functioning stable coins in the United States, which are backed by dollars held in US banks, which transact over the internet. So they are dollars in the sense that all of them are fully redeemable for money held in banks. There's no question about price volatility because they are redeemable at par for a dollar, but they're programmable in much the same way that you can send messages on Signal and WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger and, and your text messages, right? So they have all of those capacities, except that you're transmitting value and not information. These things exist today. And so as a country, we have a choice about, do we want to double down on a government monopoly like China did, Two problems with that. One is government monopolies are generally bad. And two is we're way slow out of the gate on that. Or we can do what this country does best, harness our innovative market economy and embrace the concept that there will be lots of private networks for delivering dollars in different ways, much as we all have multiple messaging apps on our phone, which allow us to send information in multiple different ways that are all useful to us for various reasons. At the OCC, the question that we have to deal with is banks are generally the transmitters of value in our society. So the question is, can banks support stablecoin projects? We've said yes, they can. They can hold reserve deposits and provide ancillary services to ensure that these stablecoins out there comply with consumer protections, don't result in bank runs, and the like. Then the question is, can banks provide other normal services to cryptocurrencies? For example, can they provide... Okay, so yeah, that's that's what I wanted to, to show you. Uh, basically, it's very important to remind yourself uh, what, what he said and uh, to, to keep that in, to keep uh, this into perspective because um, uh, he's... Uh, he's He's mentioning here a, a few very important um, subjects. So one of it is that um, uh, he's talking about the internet of value that uh, that we are at a stage where this will be happening, and the fact that uh, the first one, the well, Bitcoin, which was the first uh, implementation of uh, of this, is uh, actually started to be controlled by China because uh, they have uh, control of 50, more than 51 percent of the mining capacity. And um, I know there's a lot of discussions here, and especially on. Uh, Bitcoin finance and uh, maybe that isn't if that they're saying that this isn't true. However, the uh, I think this is beyond the point times uh, because this is the active controller controller of the currency and this is what he believes and what he transmits as message. So um, I think that's the important thing that you have to take from this, not necessarily block yourself. Well, that's not true. That blah blah blah. So uh, <laughs> that, uh, basically, the, that's what he's saying. He's the active controller of the currency, and probably there will be consequences or stuff related to that. So um, uh, basically, um, oh, he's also mentioning that uh, uh, China is already ahead. And if they try to follow it, it will take more than four years for US to to reach a similar state. So that they will fall be they will be falling behind a lot. Um, and uh, they instead of trying to follow them, they they can lead China by unleashing the private sector, which already has 
different methodologies and different products to can to to achieve the same thing. And as I said before, there won't be one to rule them all. It will be different networks that uh, uh, that will uh, that cryptos that can help here and that will have a part of the market. And I think that would be, of course, the best uh, I, from my perspective. That would be the best approach. And I, it, it is interesting that he mentions this as well. Um, and I do believe that, um, well, well, you know, that this year we have central banks, uh, or not central banks, we had the banks being allowed for uh, to custody crypto and to trade crypto. So um, <clears throat> not all, but some. <laughs> but um, it's um, uh, the, the next thing would be probably regulations on how they can do that and in under what conditions. Uh, but um, um, yeah, that's that's something that um, uh, was important uh, to to look at, and uh, I think this is might be related to this uh, because he's mentioning that uh, uh, China has control over Bitcoin, but uh, uh, SEC actually, uh, you know, that SEC uh, uh, deemed um, or gave an okay for uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, as they marked them non as non securities, while the others weren't yet. So XRP, for example, still is on. It has been on a, uh, in a lawsuit for a while now. <laughs> um, I mean, much more than everybody expected. But um, uh, um, uh, by the way, for the people that thought it will be happening, the lawsuit will be solving soon with whatever verdict. Um, I am one of those people. I thought it will be solving soon, but uh, f looking at some art some uh, articles I found on Twitter by Dave Lui, um, it's interesting to see. I, I mean, I, I'm not 100% sure that these are real, but uh, uh, looking further, I, I did seem to be real. Um, and looking at the dates for for <laughs> the lawsuits, you know, 2000, April 2020, that's a that's a joke. That's a joke. If that is true, I mean, you don't understand why Ripple is actually uh, very frustrated, and they mentioned a couple of times that they are considering moving from US because the lack of clarity in regulator regu regulations is affecting uh, their uh, their um, uh, products. Uh, because yeah, Ripple has products. The most important product they have is actually based on XRP, right? So so um, XRP is not um, is not uh, uh, filled, uh, did not receive an okay for being not being a security yet from the SEC, and they also have this lawsuit. Um, and if that date is true, I mean, what is going on with the U.S. legal system? It's a joke <laughs> if that's true. But uh, um, I do believe that this, if the SEC gave them an okay, uh, this would have been solved sooner. And how is this influencing them? Well, look, think about it. Uh, there, you're a big. Let's say that you are are you own a big company, right? And you want to uh, to invest into a product that will actually change a lot of how you're functioning today. And um, that's time, investment of time and money. Basically, in the end, it's an investment of money. <laughs> uh, um, and if you're using a product that is using something that is not regulated and is not deemed a safe or might impact your uh, your pro your how it is used within the company, um, you might have a problem with it. And p basically, I don't think a lot of big companies who are uh, going into the products or start using it officially to for the utility to kick in exactly because of that, because they need to have clarity with XRP. They need to see that XRP is not a security. Um, so I think this is the, the last, the, or not the last, one of the biggest things that X, X, uh, Ripple and XRP have to overcome for, sec for utility to kick in or the uh, XRP to be used on a larger scale. Scale. So um, uh, definitely, this is important. I do think that uh, Jake, <laughs> Jake, important step, and I, it's I'm glad from this perspective because under his uh, term, uh, XRP was um, well. They didn't offer clarity not only for XRP. I'm talking here, but I'm talking for a lot of other domains. I mean, everything. They they need to have clarity here. They need to think about the framework or something like that, not to keep a lot of projects blocked like this, right? They also need to think about the pro. Uh, f uh, of course, the people and not for to help people not to get scammed or money lost because there will be a lot of scammers on the market, of course. However, they, from my perspective, they did a poor job here. So um, hopefully, someone else will, will come in and try to to fix this. And it's important. It's it's funny that I we see this, especially very 
very uh, quickly, well, very quick after the where uh, uh, Brad Gallinhas, the CEO of uh, Ripple, gave a six months notice to to the U.S. government. If they don't fix this, they will leave U.S. And I think that's uh, that's fair to think of that. So um, yeah, that's definitely a good news. Uh, 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 news because we don't know exactly who will be the replacement <laughs> but uh definitely i don't think um it's bad and it has potential to be good news in the end um and you're asking uh, how is XRP, how is this, uh, another example of how is the lack of clarity affects xrp let's look at the uh, paypal they have um they have actually they have listed the uh, they said they will be listing uh, cryptocurrency you can buy and trade them so um and uh, a lot of people were actually uh disappointed that xrp is not there and they were asking why and that's a fair question but um they, i think this is and I, I said from the beginning i think this is the, the reason behind it because even banks when banks were given clarity to or uh, liberty to to hold and uh, trade cryptocurrency there were there was a list there was a list list there was the um, the list for um uh, crypto that were uh, given okay for trading is this and there's no, no XRP here. This is only for uh, custody, and that's the. the uh, I think that PayPal went on the safe route as uh, as it was uh, okay for the banks. They want to approach the same thing, and that's uh, probably why XRP was not listed because it's not yet deem, uh, not given an okay for trading, right? So um, probably it's also related to the fact that it was still not cleared not to be a security. So I think all. Of that all of these links together. So um, um, we, we are uh, going to, I'm going to watch this further on. Um, and um, um, uh, I think that uh, we will have a very interesting couple of months left, <laughs> or maybe a year, but we will see a lot of movement here. And I do believe that if they have the clarity beyond XRP, uh, this is beyond XRP. I mean, um, XRP will benefit from it, but a lot of projects, a lot of other projects will, it will, uh, will be uh, benefiting from this. And as Brian Brooks said, they need to unleash the private sector. They have kept it too much under leash. Um, if they want to move fast and let it let the market grow and let uh, us be the leader um, that's what uh, that that has much better chances than having the government try to do something like that and being and let china being ahead more for more than four years so especially when they have it already have it so um yeah that's it for today i hope that you enjoyed this video uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button the, if i see more engagement i will probably do more videos because i'll be more excited um other than that um thank you for watching and have a great weekend uh see you the next time